Well now, P30 manifold for a... Oh, what the hell? Okay, it's actually for a sock. And this is a modification that we've done years ago. And we'll talk about it and the origin of the mod. Or the reason why we did it way, way back. And it's actually an interesting story. And you know, we'll definitely talk about the setup when we, when we dyno that. And also teach you guys how to properly read a dyno sheet. This way, you don't get easily fooled by random numbers. And about taper and runner length and also some dyno sheets because obviously this would mean this is dyno proven Here we have a P30 manifold that's been modified or chopped off at the flange to fit a D16 manifold, a sock manifold. This way it bolts up to the single overhead cam, right? You can see the whales there on the runner. And you know, this, this kind of mod, we've done it with Bong way back in 2006. Not sure if we were first globally, but in the Philippines, locally, I know for sure and for certain, we were the first to ever do this mod. It's mainly because I was building a sock and Bong was also building a sock, a single overhead cam, and we didn't have an option for a manifold. I mean, it was too early because ordering a skunk to intake manifold was too expensive. And of course, it was just way beyond our reach. And even for Bong's customer, you know. One thing that got me a little disappointed was the runner length. And as, you, as you've noticed with all the videos that we did, like with the P30 manifold in the ITR, we extensively talk about runner length. And we had no choice because, you know, you had to chop it shorter in order to align each runner. And we'll show you a little later on that. But it did help, you know, it helped make power. So let us let me show you. Let's go measure the runner length. Okay, sorry about the rain. It's raining. You remember this? The super hose that we put a wire on the end. Wait, I have not tried this, so let's hope it goes through. Wait, oh, okay, wait. Let's put that on the side. Yep, it's working. All right. Okay, now, so, it, so that we can measure the runner length. Okay, there. Okay, now let's center this. Oh, there. All right. There you go. All right. Now it's centered. So we put a masking tape or a strip of masking tape where the flange is. This way, that's the runner length. That's the starting point. And, and of course, the runner entry is where the wire is, right? So, yeah. Let's round this off. Okay, there. Then we can pull the hose. Wait, okay, slowly. Let's not ruin the band or the wire. <clears throat> okay. Oh, okay, there. Wait, okay, wait. Let, let me wipe it. It's kind of dirty with the carbon crap. All right, there. Okay, now we measure it. Wait, let me use the OG, old school, wooden ruler. Yeah. Oh, and it's yellow. All right, there. <laughs> I have this, just, you know, because you can hammer it and all that, and it's going to be fine. All right, wait, let's see. Okay. Holy crap. It's, it's barely... Oh, it's, it's 7.5 inches. That's it. That's short. 
And you know, when we talk about the runner length and the harmonics, it means a lot when it comes to the volumetric efficiency. It makes power because of that. And this is now shortened as long as a type R manifold. So if you remember, unless you rev from 8.8 8 to 10,000 to use the third harmonic, this is too short, right? And let me show you guys the reason to that. All right, here's the P30 manifold that we did. And this is the Z6 manifold that we ported earlier, which is now owned by Lian. We just have to complete the other parts so we can ship it. You notice, to align each runner this way, you gotta cut it here around two inches. So that gets it short, right? It doesn't really necessarily add length to it, but in order to align each runner, you have to cut it short like that. So you wave your efficiency goodbye because it won't be as efficient because the airspeed will not be enough or good enough. Now, before we show you the dyno, let's look at Leanne's manifold. It's actually ported all the way to the flange and you can see here, clean. And because he runs a B16 throttle, we port match the throttle flange into 60 millimeter. It's actually 62, so it's gonna be safe. And so the story of the P30 D-Series manifold was because me and Bong, back in 2006, we were trying to figure out how to exert more power. So we came up with the idea of adapting the flange. And so we were actually stoked by it, you know, and it kind of worked, you know. But me and Bong knew exactly that the runner was too short, so it was not the best option. It was the only thing that we could do back then, but it wasn't the best option. Option. And then fast forward to 2008, I had to build another sock and had to use the same kind of manifold and I had to cut the plenum and infuse a lot of taper. And this is the dyno. This had Crower stage 3 by the way and 12.75 compression ratio. Remember, this is 2008, so two years after we first tried this manifold, so we already knew better. Here you go. It's 148.97 wheel horsepower. So essentially, it's 149, right? And look, the power is pretty good, right? It's going all the way until 8,000. So the rev limit was 8,000. So it's actually good, right? But remember, the ESI D16A6 non-VTEC that me and Bong did, and we actually ported a Z6 manifold because we knew this was too short. And here it is, 148.05 wheel horsepower. Whoa. So essentially, the VTEC one is slightly stronger, right? When you think about it, that's the numbers that we see. And you know what I did? Just to uphand you guys with the good information, I plotted the other dyno graph to this one because I don't have the program saved on this, so I can't, you know, correlate with one another. I plotted the X and Y axis, meaning the X axis for the RPM and the Y axis for the horsepower, dot for dot, and this is what we got. The VTEC one was slightly stronger, right? So let us see this. Yep, surprised, right? If you notice, it's only at the tip where it goes to 148.97 wheel horsepower, but at 5,500 RPM, the non-VTEC is actually up by 15 wheel horsepower. That's crazy. And this is why, or this is prob probably why, Bong's project, the 148 wheel horsepower non-VTEC, ran 14 two on a ESI four door. And to this day, people run close gear ratios and whatnot, but they don't really come close to that. I mean, okay, granted that they do it with a hatchback or even with fuel, but the 14.2 time or clock was all steel, full exhaust, and just Neova. No slicks, no tires. And here I removed the torque graph, so it's just wheel horsepower differences. And I'm not saying those guys ran the same B16 manifold and all that. No, what they probably are doing is building something to make a certain top end or peak power. That doesn't get you fast. And you know, that is why you have to beware, not be aware, just beware of people posting dyno numbers and all you can see is the, 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 the dyno number and partial graph. That's, that doesn't say anything or doesn't say much. You don't have to give your awe to them. 
that's that's nothing maybe that is why ecu later jaspers EF, the B20 VTEC that we built, makes 225 wheel horsepower only, but 12.5. So where are the 240 horsepower engines, right? On a trailer? That's not a street car. That is why if you see a dyno post or posted by someone or somewhere, you have to look at the whole graph. If they don't show you the whole graph, well, then you know better now, right? And that's how you're supposed to read dyno sheets. And if you remember this transmission or this video that we did of the Type R transmission, we also correlated with dynograph. And you can click here for that. And that video and this video actually teaches you more on how to read the dynograph properly. This way, you know what is up, right? Remember the P30 manifold earlier, and remember this video, which you can click here, we actually refinished the texture, and here it is. You can watch the video again and compare to the finish right now. It's a lot better, and it's still 80 grit. All we did was spend more time polishing it with ethyl alcohol mix, and it looks really good, right? Look. That's a velocity stack, even on this side. And remember that near the throttle, there's no corner, right? It looks really good. And next is the ITR manifold, which you can, you can click here to check the video. And look, before sending it for welding, we actually refinish it yet again. It looks tons better right now that's definitely definitely a better velocity stack right and here's a different angle look and look at the one near the throttle there is no corner right that's smooth so hey this is gonna make good efficient power and here are the photos again. And you can see it's actually a good looking velocity stack, right? And the reason why we keep showing you all these details like this is because when you think about it, you can buy the best spray gun for painting and let the crappy painter use it. What are you going to get? Still a crappy paint job, right? So no matter the good tools, crappy paint job is going to be there. I mentioned this because we see even people showing or posting cool tools and whatnot. But hey, the thing is, it's not going to fix an inferior builder. We all know that. Sadly, their failures, they don't post it. They just post whatever is cool. So hey, you guys there better beware. And going back to the B16 manifold that's converted to the sock and all the other details that correlate with it. All right. This idea was by me and Bong. Although other places or maybe other countries have tried it because they can't source out other parts. Like for example, I did this for a good friend in Australia that runs Motor Corp Solutions because he was working on a dock ZC that of course we couldn't find any manifold for that. So what we did was cut the flange for his manifold and welded the B16 manifold. So hey, that's an option, right? But when you think about it, me and Bong knew this was inadequate, but it was the only option we had back then. So when you think about it right now, locally, some places still try to do this because Bong of H3 Autoworks did it, not knowing it was a failed attempt that we did, you know, it was a, it was our development that we realized is not working. So, hey, what are they following? It's like a monkey see, monkey do. So at least you guys know the real story here, because I've always been part of H3 from the beginning until, you know, for good. Another thing that gets on my nerves is everyone claims to be a good friend of Bong and whatnot, just to snag a customer. I mean, come on. Like for example, details like this, if you didn't know this, then you were not close enough to Bong or H3. So I hope this gives you guys better awareness and better knowledge of the intake manifolds and whatnot, because this is Dino proven, yes. Dino proven to be inadequate. <laughs>